Hello everyone, this is your TA Casey Garner, and today we're going to go over a class example to show you SAP 2000 and show you all the features with it. Um, we have a few goals today uh, that are listed right here. Our first goal is to show students all the uh, options that are available in SAP 2000. We also want to uh, give a record so that you guys can see exactly how we did each step. And then finally, we want to have an example problem so you can relate it to your classwork. So this is our example problem that we went through in class. And yeah, it's your classwork, so uh, let's zoom in on this a little bit and take a look at what we're seeing. So we got a um, T-beam, or T-frame, and it's got a distributed changing load across the top. It's uh, 10 meters in length and then 5 meters in height. It goes from 2 kilonewtons to 10 kilonewtons. And then at 3 kilonewtons along this side of the frame, we have a 20 kilonewton load, so 3 meters up. And then the frame reactions are listed, but we really don't need to worry about those. This is our sign convention for the problem, but that's different from SAP 2000. So, yeah, this is what we got. Um, as I'm writing here, we do not use the same sign convention in class. This is a different sign convention. Um, I can talk about that later, but one of the biggest things to know is that the moment in SAP 2000 is always clockwise. So let's talk about the grid. In SAP 2000, you'll have to set up your grid. So we're going to choose the second option here, but the thing you need to note is what units you're in. We are using meters and kilonewtons, so we'll need to choose kilonewton meters from this drop-down menu, typically under the foot and pounds and kips pounds. So choose that. It has a C next to it for centigrade. And we're going to need to set up our grid as well. Then we need to add one to each of the units that we also have. This bottom section you're going to leave pretty much as is, so don't worry about that. Just, yeah. So, um, we have a frame that is 10 meters wide, as we can see here. So that means we're actually going to need a grid of 11 intervals. So we're going to type in 11 there. And then our Y, we don't want to touch at all because that would be into the plane. And then our Z is our height, which is going to be 6 because we have 5 plus the 0 point. So 0 to 5, so that means you have 6 points. Finally, all of these spacings, you want to set these equal to 1. That way one grid spacing is equal to 1 meter. You want to do this for x, y, and z. Just always leave these as 1. It'll make your life a lot easier. If you don't, your lengths of your members will be far too long and they'll bend far out of shape. Just put them at 1. Okay, so we got that. Now on the right you can see our 3D plane, you won't have to worry about that. And on now this is a big window, you're looking at the XY plane. This is looking at a plan view straight down. We don't want that. We actually want to look at the XZ plane, which is going to be a side view. So let's build our frame. Um, here's a few tips and tricks. We're just going to go over to the left hand side over here um, and choose the member piece. And we're going to make our top piece. That's 10 meters across. You'll see the length on there. And if you right click, you'll be able to just close out and you won't have to go keep on clicking the member over again. So I was just click, start with the left click and end with the right click and you just can keep on doing that to add each independent member. So now that we've done that, um, yeah, close out of there. And we're going to assign the loads now. So we're going to have a distributed load and a joint load. So we're going to select our top member here, go to the assign frame loads, distributed, and we'll come up with this little box. Now we're currently setting up a dead load, but um, in the problem we're going to have a live load. So I'm going to show you how to add this live load here. We're going to type live, change this drop down menu to live, and then we're just going to say add member, if you, or add the load case. If you don't do that, it won't come out properly. It won't actually get added. So, so press OK, we're going to change this to live load, and then these boxes down in the middle here, um, after we add two additional loads, even though we're going to be adding two nothing. The top is the percentage across the beam from the left to the right. The bottom is the actual load you want at that point that you're defining. So we're going to set this to zero, 100% across the top of the beam. And then we're going to set the last two boxes at one and one. So those are just going to be at the same point. And they're just going to be 10 and 10. So that should be good. Press OK. So we have our distributed load from 2 kN to 10 kN across the beam. Now we're going to add a joint at 3 meters up. There we go. 
and then we're going to select that joint and we're going to assign the joint load to it. Assign joint loads. We're going to also add this one as a live, so that's good. Just put in the drop down menu as live load. And then we're going to make this negative 20 because when we look at our drawing, this is in the negative direction compared to our total Cartesian coordinate system. And then, let's see where we're we? negative 20. We're going to just type that in here. And we can also add that to additional. Or we can just leave it as, yeah, we're, um, yeah, do additional. Okay. And there we go. So we have that. All right. And so next we need to add ourselves some wonderful joints and supports. Otherwise our frame is flying over the place. So select our joint, go to jo assign, joints, restraints. We got fast restraints down here and we want a ping connection. So we can select that or we can uncheck these. But if you just hit the fast restraint, it's gonna put everything back. Hit okay, you're solid, got a pin. Now I need a roller, select that joint, assign, joints, restraints, Hit the roller button, hit OK, now you got a roller. Congratulations. Let's talk about our other member properties that we need to edit. First of all, I want to show you something about selecting here. This is actually an interesting tool, it can kind of help, can kind of be a pain. So, if you select from top left to bottom right, you will only select the things that are actually inside the box. But if you go from bottom right to top left, anything that is touching the box will actually be selected. So, if I want to select just around this corner, when I do that, everything's selected now. If I all right, so we're going to go up to to define materials. I'm going to find some uh, material properties here, add a new property, and we're just going to call this steel right up here at the top. And then the one box we're concerned about is right here. This is the only one we're concerned about. This is your modulus elasticity. If you're given to that in a problem, that's where you put it. Hit OK. That should be fine. As long as you're selected, you should be good there. And now we're going to do the fun piece. We're going to define ourselves some material section properties. So we're going to click on our member and we're going to go click double right click on it. And we can say our section properties. So that was a right click. And we can uh, click on this. Um, add new section. And we're not going to do a steel section, so we're going to go to a general. And then we're going to click on general here. And you're going to have four of them. We're only going to be worried about the uh, moment about this 3-3 three, three axis. You'll see why later. Um, but according to our problem, this is going to be I equals 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative fourth meters to fourth uh, for deflection. So this is meters to the fourth, so it's going to be a really small value. Um, so we type in 0 0.000333. And we don't need to worry about that one. And then we're going to set our shear values to like 10 million here because we don't want our shear to be limiting our design. And that's going to be important. You don't want to screw that, but it doesn't matter that extra zero, but whatever. All right, so yeah, once those are set, like I said, we can leave this one to zero. Um, really just want to drive that in. Don't need to worry about it because it's in the 2-2 axis. If we're worried about bending about the um, y-axis, then we would worry about it. But set it to one. Okay, and you can see why here, just the two and three axis, so that's how it would actually be bending about, we're not worried about bending about the two axis because it's not bending laterally. And we can set our material properties here, or our weight modifier, sorry. And we want to set both these equal to zero because we don't want our dead load to be affecting this uh, analysis. So, I'm going to click OK. Don't forget to do that step, please. Um, we're also going to change the name of this to general. And everything's good here. Okay, hit okay. And everything full too, so we're okay. So now that's true for this member, and we need to make it true for the next one. So we double click here and change to general, hit okay. And that's came through, all right. All right, so now we're gonna show you another nifty little trick. Um, this is for dividing frames and joining members. This can become helpful, I'm excited. Hope you are too. So we're going to select our member we want to divide. We're going to go to um, edit right up here and frame, divide frame. And we're going to select the uh, second option because we have a joint selected in the middle and it's going to divide at that joint. So this is just a top member. We can choose all the others option two, but we're just going to hit OK. And now this is going to be two separate members right here. 
and then select unselect each side instead of selecting the whole top beam. Now, if we want to join these members back together again, we just go back to the same place and so we say join and voila, there we go. We have one awesome joined member together. And there's a couple other options we have uh, for dividing frames, but yeah. Now we're going to replicate the frames. This is something you really do need to know for your projects. So we're going to select everything here. And we're going to replicate this in Y. So we're going to go to Edit and Replicate. That's three options above. And we're going to replicate this in Y. We're going to put it offset at one meter. So this is the iteration distance. So we're going to say one meter. And we're going to change it in Y. So this is going to put a bunch of these frames next to each other horizontally. So we're going to do it five times and hit OK. And yeah, sorry, five here. Come on, there we go. And you don't see anything, but then you go to 3D, that's what you get now. So these are all anchored, these are all independently set. And that's what it looks like when you replicate in the Y direction. Now what happens if you want to replicate in the X direction? So we're going to undo that. Hit Control Z. By the way, Control Z works in this program too, amazingly. So edit, replicate, instead of replicating in the Y, we're going to replicate at 10 meter distances in the X. So this is going to put five of these next to each other, just like we have here. F3 brings us to the full design, and we have a bunch of these awesome columns set together. And x bands are good for us too, which is really convenient. So if we want to display our loads, we go to display right here, and frames and cables, and we're going to show our live load. It'll show, this will, this will show our distributed load across the top, and you can see it's replicated for all five sets, now six. All right, so let's uh, undo, get rid of all of these, and go back to our original one piece that like, our problem had in the beginning. Now we're gonna start our analysis now. So when we do our analysis, we're gonna actually have to save it during our process, so that's gonna come up. But we're just gonna have everything set up. We're gonna click this little play button, and it's going to want to run the analysis. Oh, but first we're gonna go to our analysis options. We're gonna set X, Y, X, Z plane for a frame. And then we're going to hit the play. We're going to turn off our dead and our modal. And then we're going to hit run now and it'll ask us to save. So, and here's your lovely deformed shape that you all so much love drawing in your homeworks. If you press on this I beam button up here, you can see whether or not it's loaded to your failure points. Otherwise, if you go to this next button over, you can go to your frames and cables, choose your live, uh, Hold on a second here. Oh, this is your axial force under dead load. Or it's not sorry, live load. Um, if you want to see the actual values, hit the wire or the show values on chart, and I'll show those here and here. If you want to show your shear, you go to the shear two two, not three three two two, and it'll show your values for shear two two shear. So, like I said before, SAP does not use the same sign convention. So if you want to see moment. You go click the moment 3-3 three, because three, you're bending about the 3-3 three, three axis. Hit OK. And these are your moment diagrams. Now these can be a little bit hard to see. So if you right click on your member, it'll come up with this amazing box right here where you can find the shear, moment, or deflection at any point. And due to any combination of loads. And also for each of these, moment, shear, and deflection, we can go up to the top right over here and we can click show max and it'll find our maximum values. This is extremely helpful, and when we're showing deflection, we want to click the absolute. So this is going to give us absolute deflection at each point instead of a relative, which is best for your homeworks, trust me. Um, and I'll show you the location and the actual values for each moment shear and deflection. So that's for the top member here. And if we want to go to our side member, we, um, or our column. And yeah, we can go between each of, the, any of these. So going to our column here, right click on that, and it'll show us each of our deflection, the moment, and you can also pull this around on here, um, any different value, and it'll tell you just exactly what your moment shear and deflection are at that point. Set for max, okay, we're good. And yeah, so that's how you do all your analysis. Um, you can read the results right off of there, and uh, if you want to get back to your deform shape, you just press F6 or press this button and hit OK, and there's your deform shape again. 
So let's talk about this background. It's uh, nice and black, which doesn't come out on a printer so well. So if you go to dis view, display options, press this for a white background, hit OK. You can get your values out here. You can change your uh, what you're actually looking at again. It's still in the analysis to moment, moment. And this is your moment diagram. Values are easier to see. Or sheer, sheer. And yeah, you can go ahead and print this, and this will turn out on white paper and be really easy to read compared to the black, which will lace out of ink. So I've mentioned a few of the hotkeys throughout this video. Um, here's the good ones to know. F3 will show your whole frame. F2 will enable a box zoom, so you can just select what you want to see. If you select down to the right, it only selects the objects in the box. Selecting up to the left, it selects all the objects touching the box. F6 shows the deformed shape. If you ever get stuck, just uh, exit your analysis and hit escape twice. So this is 340 SAP 2000 by Casey Garner.